Hello, hello, hello. All right. We want to do a little audio check here to make sure that everybody out there can hear me okay. Any of the people online, first of all, welcome to uh, Westlake Pro and uh, Avid Pro Tools 11 event. Before we get started, we just want to make sure that everybody can hear us and see us out there. Can any of the people online just give us a little uh, reply on the audio there? See if they can hear us okay. And I'm going to have to ask... Okay. Complete silence, yes. We've got a, we're doing an online webinar uh, as well as a live studio audience. And I'm going to have to ask everybody, please take three large steps back from the front row. Never mind. It didn't work. <laughs> All right. All right. Get my little presentation ready here. How are we doing on the audio out to the to the web? Are we good? Great. All right, cool. I'm going to get started. My name's John Conley, first of all, and second of all, thanks for uh, Westlake Pro hosting this event for us tonight. And um, give you a, a brief background about uh, who I am. I'm uh, a longtime DigiDesign Avid employee, started back in 1995, did some tech support and application specialists and all that good stuff. And now I'm part of the AVID training department, and I've been uh, lucky enough here to participate in this event tonight. We're going to go over s the new Pro Tools 11 software uh, features and, of course, cover some hardware as well. And hopefully we'll answer a lot of the questions that we have um, so far. We've had a few questions posted in advance, and I have a list of those. And, of course, we're taking questions live as well as online. So if you have questions, please feel free to chime in, and we will do our best to answer those. Uh, with that said, hopefully the presentation will answer a lot of those. So if we can wait to some degree, unless it's pertinent to what we're talking about on the presentation, the presentation itself might answer a lot of these questions. So with that, I'm going to start and get right into it. So before we step right into Pro Tools 11, we wanted to give you a little background about <clears throat> the the roadmap and where we started with this whole uh, HD native HDX AAX plugin thing. And that whole plan started with Pro Tools 9. If you recall, we came out with the Pro Tools HD native card. That's the PCIe card that you see there. And then not long after that, we came out with the HD native Thunderbolt box, which allow you to run Pro Tools HD software uh, at a lower price point and uh, take advantage of all the features of an HD system. And of course, this is a native system, so all of its processing power comes from the computer that you're running it on. The PCIe card version works on Mac or PC. The HD native Thunderbolt right now is only working on, on Macs. Uh, iMacs or laptops with Thunderbolt por ports are now um, supported and valid machines for uh, Pro Tools HD. So that started in Pro Tools 9. Very shortly after that, we came out with the, the new HD series I.O. We really raised the bar on the quality of our, our uh, converters. This is not simply a facelift on the 192. The HD I.O. was redesigned from the ground up. We added the Matty I.O. as a, a new option to our uh, I.O. lineup, 64 channels of digital I.O. via uh, light pipe, or uh, not light pipe, but uh, digital or copper. And, of course, the Omni, which is a uh, kind of a Swiss Army knife interface. It's got two mic pre's, two DI's, uh, monitoring section, separate headphone volume. The Avid uh, audio interface lineup, that was around Pro Tools 9. Then Pro Tools came, uh, 10 came out, and with that, we announced the Pro Tools HDX card, and that's our, our flagship Pro Tools system, the, the newer version of our TDM system, and hopefully with the release of that, we uh, kind of eliminated some confusion. When we came out with the Pro Tools uh, HD native card, everybody was wondering, are we gonna, is Avid gonna abandon you know the DSP systems? No. We have not. HDX is the, the new DSP system. And of course, with that, we also introduced the AAX plugin format. And I know there's a lot of questions about that in terms of compatibility and where the plugin developers are on that. So we're going to come back to that 
and revisit that a couple of times throughout the presentation. And lastly, all of that roadmap leads up to Pro Tools 11, this release that we just announced and started shipping just last week, actually. 64-bit version of Pro Tools, new audio engine, etc. In fact, there's a, a quick overview of all the new features or some of the new features that have been added to Pro Tools 11. And we're going to dig in on those today. Now, this presentation, thanks to Gil Gowing and Jeff Komar, they were the ones, uh, and Tom Graham, I believe, also put together this presentation. And this is a presentation that has been around, uh, the, well, the world by now, uh, the country. And this was the demo system that they were using for this presentation. I am using uh, a a variation of this. I'm not using a laptop. I'm using a Mac Pro with two HDX cards. I know I'm showing off two HDX cards. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit of that in just a second, too. Actually, we can see, I don't know if you can see the system in the camera or not, but I have an HD Omni, an HD IO, and I'm running the Avid uh, Nitrous DX for my video hardware. If you can't see that, we'll, we'll give you a shot a little bit later. The demo material that we're using is a uh, short spot on the Fisker Karma vehicle here. It's some demo material that we were able to, to take advantage of using Avid Video and, of course, Pro Tools for the audio side. So we'll see a little bit of that later on, too. So let's get into it. The first big feature I think that most people have been waiting for is the 64-bit architecture. Pro Tools, starting in Pro Tools 11, is a 64-bit application. And what that means is no more memory limitations. In the past, Pro Tools had a limit of about 4 gigs of RAM. So any plugins that used samples, for example, virtual instruments, <clears throat> could max that out very easily. So now with Pro Tools 11, you can use as much RAM as your system has. And if you see in this shot to the right there, it's a little screenshot of the uh, Mac activity monitor showing Pro Tools using 10 gigs of RAM. So uh, not only does it allow a better performance for virtual instruments, which typically are the RAM, RAM hogs, but it now allows huge sessions. The HDX card supports much higher track count, 256 voices per card at 48K. So a three-card system, for example, could get you up to 768 tracks of playback, and a lot of RAM could be needed to accommodate that. So uh, the 64-bit architecture plays a, a, a key part in that as well. So very large sessions, higher sample rates, all can be easily attained in Pro Tools 11 now. Here's a few examples of some previous common problems in Pro Tools. Some of these plugins, great sounding plugins, used samples to uh, attain that sound quality. And as you can see in the, uh, the in, in, uh, inside shots of these plugins, they used quite a bit of RAM. For example, the Superior Drummer over here was using about two and a half gigs on its own. That by itself in previous versions of Pro Tools would, would basically bring Pro Tools to its knees. Ivory 2, great sounding grand pianos uh, also very RAM intensive. Now it's not a problem in Pro Tools 11. And these are just some of the uh, plugins that will now run in Pro Tools 11 and examples of the new AAX 64-bit versions of these plugins. The Avid Video Engine, this is uh, new and improved as well. So we added the ability to play Avid Video directly inside Pro Tools. And we've done that in the past, but this time it's a little bit different. We now have the ability to play back standard def and or HD video inside Pro Tools as standard, uh, as the native uh, Avid Video format, which is MXF Video, and of course, as well as QuickTime. And you can do that without Avid video hardware, which is new. In the past, if you wanted to play Avid Video, it always required Avid Video hardware. Not the case anymore. You can do it without Avid hardware. You can do it with Avid hardware in the form of the Avid Mojo DX or the Avid Nitrous DX, which is in the lower left corner. Or you can use um, one of a few different third-party video peripherals, the AJA or Aja Box and Blackmagic. Both make a couple of devices that are supported for video playback um, from Pro Tools. All right, the Avid Audio Engine. So we talked briefly about 
how RAM, the, the limitations of RAM and how they've been lifted and how that affects plug-in performance. We've also revamped the Avid Audio engine. So in addition to having uh, access to more RAM, just the whole performance of plugins inside Pro Tools has totally been revamped. And you'll notice in this shot here, I'm going to break out here and go back to Pro Tools. I want to show you something here in my system usage window. Look at that. That's a uh, Pro Tools centerfold right there, if I've ever seen one. So this top section here, in previous versions of Pro Tools, you had one CPU meter, and that was it. Now with Pro Tools 11, we're taking advantage fully of all of the processors of this system here. And you can see them kind of trembling and moving there, just ready for action. This is a 24. It's a, uh, what is it? Let's take a look, show you exactly what this is in terms of processing power. It's a 6-core, dual 6-core. So what that shows up in Pro Tools as 24 processors, all of them are ready to go for Pro Tools playback. And now this section here is just my native processing, uh, formerly known as RTAS. EQs, compressors, virtual instruments, all of that processing power in this area is ready to be used inside Pro Tools. The sections down below here are my HDX cards, and I'm going to come back to that. That Avid Audio Engine greatly improves the performance of native plugins. So simply a software upgrade to your system right now will give you a tremendous more horsepower in terms of plugins without even uh, you know upgrading your computer or Pro Tools hardware if you're already on an HD native or MBox or even a uh, third-party interface. So you'll notice huge improvements there. In dynamic plug-in processing, the third point there, what that means is as the session needs more power, it will take more power, and more importantly, when it doesn't, it will free that up. I'm going to start playback here and uh, show you how that native processing works, and you'll see that this top section, the CPU, let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. All the processors are kind of working there, and they will fluctuate as there's more or less audio or more or less processing going on at the session at that time. And when I hit stop, we should see those come down a little bit. Yeah, they come down slightly. I'm barely even taxing this computer. It's hard to uh, stress this out. It's so, so powerful here. All right, so Avid Audio Engine improvements, which brings on the next topic plugins that now work in Pro Tools 11. Of course, Pro Tools 10 introduced the AAX format. Pro Tools 11 requires the AAX 64-bit version of that format. If you have RTAS or TDM plugins, they will not work in Pro Tools. This is a short list of some of the plugin manufacturers that are already available as AAX 64-bit plugins. And of course, this list is growing uh, by the week, by the month, as more manufacturers are completing their AAX 64-bit porting. So this list is uh, getting longer all the time. There is a uh, string on the Avid website in the, um, the DUC, the DigiDesign User Conference, or the Avid Audio User Conference, called AAX Plugins, which will give you an update on what's going on with all of the plugins uh, in their development there. All right, so in addition to increasing the performance, we also added another function inside the audio engine, which will benefit everybody. This doesn't is limit this performance to you know HD systems. It applies to everybody, and this is a low latency recording uh, buffer. If you have a native system, if you're running an MBox or a third-party interface, you're probably very familiar with that hardware buffer size setting. You've probably had to uh, jockey that around a bit. And of course, you know, and that's over here on the right side, the HW buffer size, the smaller the number, the lower the latency. But at the same time, that means you're probably going to be able to use fewer plugins. The higher that number, the more plugins, but the higher latency, of course. So you have to manage that. Pro Tools 11 splits that so that <clears throat> tracks in playback, and that's audio tracks, uh, MIDI tracks using virtual instruments will use a high buffer. Tracks that are record enabled will take advantage of the small buffer that you've set in your playback engine. So the fixed playback engine is for playback tracks. 
the variable playback engine that you switch in your playback engine window, the hardware buffer size, applies to record enabled tracks. So this will allow you to get the best of both worlds. A lot of plugins and also low latency recording at the same time. We call that uh, the the dual buffer zone and it's part of the uh, Avid Audio Engine improvements. So hopefully you'll notice that right out of the gate. Less messing with your playback engine. That's always a good thing. All right. We've got a little text message from my buddy Tam Tom Graham here. Never leaves us alone. He wants me to bring him a coffee too. He wants a bounce from this session that I'm currently in. And basically he wants to show off the faster than real-time bounce to disk. Yes, that's true. Faster than real-time bounce to disk. So I'm going to make a selection in this session here. And it's just under two minutes. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter for the sake of demonstration here. We'll make it about uh, one minute long. <clears throat> I'm going to bounce the disk. And <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that this little checkbox down at the bottom here, I'm going to zoom in. How are we looking over there? Can you see that good over there? Yeah. Okay. This little offline button down here at the bottom, this will enable my offline bounce. Oops, and I wasn't supposed to show this. This just let the cat out of the bag there of my next trick. My bounce source is my stereo output. Of course, my file type, all that stuff's pretty much the same here. But in this case, I'm going to choose a, a different location. I'm going to go to my mixes folder. <clears throat> and I'm going to hit bounce. And we'll now see this bounce occur faster than real time. And what we're seeing is about 2.7, 2.8 times real time. Now this speed is going to be dependent on number one, the speed of your computer, number two, the complexity of your sessions and how many plugins you're running at any given time. The faster than real time bounce does work with virtual instruments, with uh, you know any of the plugins that you're using inside Pro Tools. So anything that you're doing inside Pro Tools will apply. Now secondly, what I really need to do is I need to include more than one bounce, I need to bounce stems. So I'm going to add a couple of different options here. Here's my buses, and I'm just going to go to, uh, let's see, here's my effects stereo bus, and I'm going to do another, here's my music bus, we'll add another one. And these are just the buses that are in the session that I've used for routing internally. I'm picking them off and I'm going to do bounces off of those buses. Let's see if I have another one. Here's a Printmaster sub. Okay. So what I've done here is created four different sources and I can do up to 16. Now this is a Pro Tools HD only, Pro Tools 11 HD only feature right here. The ability to bounce multiple stems at one time. So I'm going to hit bounce, but before I do that, I'm going to choose a different location. I'm going to go to the, the desktop and create a new folder called um, Mix Bounces so that you can see what happens there. We'll hit open and bounce. <clears throat> now it's going to cr create all four of those bounces. Well, we're not going to do that at once. <laughs> Rehearsal, it worked fine. I'm going to fire that up again and give it a shot. What this will do is allow you to create your music, your dialogue, your effects stems, and your final mixes. And they can be stereo, 5.1, uh, LCR, whatever width you want to do all simultaneously. You can do that very easily at one shot. All right. You see how fast the uh, system loaded up there? That's another bonus of Pro Tools 11. Make a lemonade out of lemons. That's what that's called there. Video files. We have Avid Video inside this session <clears throat> as we reboot here. So I have a question. The What's the limit or is there a limit on stems doing multiple bounces? So there you can do stereo, 5171. Each stem or bus can be as wide as you want it to be. Yeah, so there's no limitations on that. And you can do 16 buses or 16 bounces simultaneously if you want to. All right. Yes. Oh, do you have another question? Uh, 
the question is, are we working with Dolby on Atmos? The answer is um, yes. To what degree, I don't know at this point. But I can tell you that there's a lot of Avid, former Avid employees at Dolby now. So the, the communication and the integration there is, is going to be uh, hard to deny. So, yes. So the question is, will you be able to run 32-bit plugins in the 64-bit architecture? No, they will have to be for Pro Tools 11 AAX 64-bit plugins, or they won't run. In fact, when you launch Pro Tools, if you have any of the AAX 32-bit plugins in your system, it will tell you, hey, this plugin is not a 64-bit version. Do you want me to move it into the plugins unused? So Pro Tools 11 will require 64-bit plugins. And uh, that's why one of the reasons why we have the Pro Tools 10 co-install, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. So we're back at this bounce. We're going to try this one more time. I'm going to choose a, a location here to bounce this. I'm going to go to desktop, mix bounces, and give it a shot. I did this like three times this morning. There we go. <clears throat> That's the way it's supposed to work. So we're getting about a 2.7 times real time, <clears throat> four bounces at once. We'll go out to the desktop, and where's my mix bounces? There it is. And those are my stems. Now I've got duplicates there because it started the other four right before I crashed there. But that's the, uh, the result of my multi-bus bounce, faster than real time. And also within that window, I should point out too, we have the ability to, uh, of course, add to iTunes library like we have in the past. You can share your uh, bounces with SoundCloud or Gobbler, and you can also include an MP3 at the same time. Now, that assumes that it's a stereo bounce to create a, a stereo MP3. So you have some options in here in the bounce window that didn't exist previously, and they're all pretty cool. Very, very valuable time savers there. All right, let's go back to our, oh, Tom's back. Never mind, I sent those to you, Tom. Okay, so the offline bounce, as I mentioned a second ago, it supports virtual instruments. Rewire applications are also included in the faster than real time. And of course, AAX, DSP, and native systems are all uh, part of the, um, the faster than real time bounce. And one other thing too, I forgot to mention here, there's another location that I can get to that. So if I have a bus in here, for example, let's say this is my, uh, my, my, my bus that I want to bounce, I can right click there and bounce my DX sub, that's my bus, right from the track. So I can pick off any routing in the session that I want right from there and right click and, and go to bounce the disc. Some cool bounce functions. All right, this, as you may know, is the D-Control, part of the Icon family. And one of the big focuses of the D-Control and D-Command, the Icon series control services, was visual feedback. You had uh, the ability to see send metering, uh, gain reduction across multiple sends, multiple inserts simultaneously. And we thought that we would try to bring that back into the software as well. So what was done is a few things. First of all, the resolution of the fader or the size of the fader has increased in Pro Tools 11. The Pro Tools 11 is on the left, Pro Tools 10 on the right. You'll see that just the size of the fader and therefore the meter as well has increased so that you have greater resolution to see what's going on there. That's the first thing. Your meter visual feedback is improved. Also, we take advantage of Retina graphics. So if you're on a Mac that has the, the Retina display, the graphic improvement is going to be very noticeable. And we have a couple of examples here. The waveforms on the left, the top one is the Retina, the, bo the bottom one is the standard. That may not be as um, easily recognizable as the middle example where you have the grabber, the hand tool up on top, that's Retina, and then the one on the bottom is uh, non or standard and it's a little bit pixelated and a little bit fuzzy here. You'll see that you have much better graphics, especially when I do things like zoom in on the uh, the graphics here. So if I do something like this, 
I can zoom way in and the graphics stay much cleaner than they did in the past which is good when you start losing your eyesight like I have you need to be able to zoom in Advanced metering, this is another example of visual feedback. We've had a uh, feature request for many years to improve the metering inside Pro Tools, and we have done just that. On uh, Pro Tools 11, we have the ability to choose several different meters. This is global for master faders, we give you the option to have a different metering type on master faders as you do across the whole session. So if I change my graphic, uh, I mean my metering, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Hopefully that will translate to the uh, to the internet there. If I change to linear meters, you'll see my metering here on the right has changed, updated, and that goes across all tracks. And we've got the Pro Tools Classic mode for you old school old school folks that want to, you know, stay in your Pro Tools classic ways and there's there's more so if I right click here I also can show my my gain reduction inside on the side of that meter and I have the option to choose what type of gain reduction I'm looking at based on what plugins I might have on any of those tracks so I can limit the gain reduction metering to be a compressor limiter expander gate uh, make the priority be compressor or I can view all of it summed and the, the gain reduction that you will see is this little sliver on the side here let me uh, hit play here there's my gain reduction right there So I'm looking at metering on the track as well as gain reduction of any plugins on that track. And this is a feature that was previously only on the Icon consoles that has moved back to Pro Tools. Absolutely not. No associate of mine. All right. Advanced metering. Now, we also have the ability to tweak those parameters for those meter options. If I go into my setup menu and to preferences, we have a new tab in our Pro Tools preferences called metering that allows you to tweak some uh, some variables on here and more most importantly the the meter type which you can do right on the track like I just showed you a second ago but also what we call the color break high and low so where your metering turns to uh, a different color green so for example if I take this uh, well, I'm going to go back to what was a digital view. We'll take this color break down to, I don't know, 40. That's not a number you would probably ever want to do, but for the sake of demonstration, you can see the metering. Now I got to have a meter that uh, actually will show that. Look at these master faders here. So down at 40 dB is where the color changes. And of course, the high color changes up here where it turns to orange. So we have the ability to map out where the color changing occurs on the meters, which can be helpful. Definitely. All right. Power mixing commands. Another feature that was available on the Icon consoles was the ability to mute all sends or all inserts, which was kind of weird that it wasn't available in Pro Tools, but now in Pro Tools 11 it is, and I forget all of these keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to stumble through a couple of them here. I have the ability to mute all of my inserts on A through E, all of my sends A through E. I can do the same thing with sends um, F through J as well. And I can do all sends at once, or I can do all plugins at once. Let me open up the other plugin row here so you can see all 10 inserts and 10 sends. So once again, there's, uh, was it shift? Yeah, there's all inserts at once. So, you know, once you've got seven plugins on your track and you've clearly gone down that plug-in rabbit hole, sometimes it's nice to hear, hey, what did this sound like originally? Hey, that actually sounds better. <laughs> If that happens, back off the plugins. 
So uh, we can also do things like uh, mute these plugins from this spot down. If I remember the keyboard shortcut, yes. So I'm holding shift and control and whatever plugin I click on, it will mute that one and anything below it, which is quite helpful. That uh, saves you, in this case, five mouse clicks right there. And same thing applies for sends. So anything I click, that and anything below it will be muted. And there's a variety of keyboard shortcuts that are uh, enabled by this. Also, Shift E will enable, uh, or I should say, mute EQ plugins. Uh, C will do compressor plugins. D will do delay plugins, which I don't have visual on the screen right now. And I think there's one for R too. It's not Shift R because that's record. But uh, so you have the ability to mute quantities of plugins. Also based on selection. So if I do a shift option, one, what is it? Can't remember what the plugin, there it is. Let's try this. Nope. There it is. So I can mute everything below that plugin on the selected tracks only. So you have a lot of control with bypassing or muting plugins or sends. And this is uh, brought back from the, the icon consoles. All right, Yukon. For any of you using the, the Yukon control services, Yukon 3.0 was released with Pro Tools 11. And um, of course, it added new soft keys for metering and metering preferences. But the big thing here is the speed and performance boost that came out of Yukon 3. So you'll notice a huge performance improvement with Yukon, anybody using the um, Euphonics control services for Pro Tools. Workspace. This is. In the you had your workspace window and there was basically four different flavors of workspace. Now they've condensed it all into one. And right off the bat, you notice on the right side here, we have uh, the locations area, which quickly allows you to get to the desktop. That was always my gripe. You had to dig down five or six levels just to get to the desktop. Maybe that was a good thing. It probably kept your desktop a little little bit cleaner. But now you can get to it quickly. And of course, I can see all my volumes. I have all my catalogs. Cool thing with this is it will allow me to show any drives that I've had connected to my system at, at, at any given point. As long as the drive was indexed, if I go over here and show offline volumes, I don't have one. Let me uh, ditch one here. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to get rid of my drive over here. I'll eject that. Go back to Pro Tools. And that now is my offline drive. But the cool thing is I still have the ability to go through that drive and search. This is really helpful for me just from a file management standpoint. I've got a, a gazillion drives at home and I always need to figure out what's on each drive. If I connect them to my system once and let Pro Tools index them, they'll be available to me at any given point. So I can search through these offline drives looking for something that might be there or not. But I don't have to waste a lot of time mounting each one and you know, searching through it. So this is a, a one big bonus of the of the new workspace, and of course, I can hide that too. So I don't want to have to look at all those offline volumes every time. I can see just the drives that are connected to the system. Other thing that's new and improved about this is the search engine underneath the hood for Pro Tools 11 has been totally revamped, and it's extremely fast now. So for example, if I do a kick it immediately gives me the results of my search. In the previous versions of Pro Tools, you would type and then you'd get the spinning wheel and it would take a time for, for it to find whatever you're looking for. So it's greatly improved. The workspace is condensed into one window. So of course, I can have multiples open if I want to. But um, get rid of that. And there we go, back to my drive. So that's the workspace volume improvements. 64-bit database engine. Wow, I didn't know that. HDX. Now we get into the hardware side, and that's actually what I'm using here tonight on this system. This is closer to the system that I'm running, of course, minus the Euphonics console over here. I'm using a Mac Pro Tower. I'm using two HDX cards. I have an HD Omni interface, a Sync I.O., and an HD I.O., just like in the picture. I don't have the Matty box at the very bottom here, but that's exactly the system that I'm running here. 
satellite technology. This was introduced back, I don't know, Pro Tools 8, Pro Tools 7, 4, something like that. This was the ability to synchronize two or more Pro Tools HD systems by simply using an Ethernet cable. Connect the multiple systems via Ethernet, and it's basically machine control over Ethernet. That used to cost 750 bucks per system. It's now free. Back me up on that, Dave. That's free, right? Thank you. You have two HD systems. Simply get them on the same network. You, they will act as one large system. And of course, you can go up to 12 systems simultaneously. You can add one of those systems as a media composer, an avid media composer for your video playback device, uh, which is a great bonus in a lot of workflows. Or you can use a Pro Tools standard, formerly known as Pro Tools LE, as a video satellite LE system. Maybe you want to play back video on your uh, smaller your laptop, but you want it to be synchronized with Pro Tools. You can use a, a Pro Tools standard system as a satellite, and all that stuff is now free. Previously, it was extra, extra purchases. Not the case anymore with Pro Tools 11. Offline bounce, we talked about this a minute ago. Bounce up to 16 paths. I did four. Create multiple mixes faster than real time. And of course, we can bounce them to whatever folder we wanted to uh, and plant them exactly where we want them to go. And of course, place them where we want to send them to Gobbler. Do we want to add them to our iTunes library? We have some options now in the, in the bounce to disk window. Co-installation. So we had a question earlier about 32-bit um, plugins. So this is something new, co-installation. We have the ability to have Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11 installed on the system simultaneously. And the main reason of that is in the event that there are plugins that you need that are not AAX 64-bit yet, you can launch Pro Tools 10, take advantage of those plugins, print Whatever you need to do, turn it into audio, close Pro Tools 10, and relaunch Pro Tools 11 if you'd like, and take advantage of its features faster than real-time bounce, uh, the you know extended RAM, whatever it may be. It does not require a reboot. They can live on the same boot drive. You don't even need to restart. Just quit one, launch the other. They share the same session format, so there's no translation or conversion necessary. This does require Pro Tools 10.3.6, which is available now. has a free update on the Avid website. And, of course, 11. All right, so this, the particulars on system requirements. We've got a lot of questions about this. Mac OS 10.3.6. I think is in the process of being qualified right now. And I'm actually running 10.8.4 on this system right now. 8 gigs of RAM minimum, 16 recommended, and RAM is cheap. Get more, 32 gigs. Especially if you're doing a lot of virtual instrument stuff, take advantage of that Pro Tools 11 unlimited RAM usage. Bump, bump your RAM up in your system. On the PC side, Windows 8 Professional, Windows 8, Windows 7, Home, Premium, Professional, or Ultimate with Service Pack 1 is required. And again, the RAM requirements are the same on the PC side. 8 gigs minimum, 16 recommended. Now we're getting into the compatibility. And I had some of the questions here sent in earlier, and I, I have a feeling there's going to be more questions on here. So hopefully this will address some of those questions. What is fully supported and tested by Avid for Pro Tools 11 is the Mbox 3 family, the 003 family, that includes the rack mount and the desktop units, 11 rack, the new Fast Track Solo and Fast Track Duo interfaces that we came out with just recently, and of course the HDX cards and HD native PCIe and HD native Thunderbolt are all fully supported, and of course all of the, the black interfaces that you see there. Uh, Omni, HDIO, MADI, DigiPre, and the Sync HD. And I'm going to revisit that in just a second. Control surfaces, D Control, D Command, the Icon family, fully tested and supported. C24 is fully supported. And of course, Yukon Control surfaces, the whole Artist Series, MC Pro, and System 5 MC are all fully supported and tested. Not officially supported. Untested, but they work. 
This is a new category for AVID support. We normally haven't done this in the past. So if you have the 192, the blue HD interfaces, the 192 digital, the 96, 96i, they're all working. They uh, weren't sure about this early on. You may uh, recall in, when Pro Tools 10 was announced that the blue interfaces were not going to be supported. Um, and we weren't sure if they were going to work. So as it turns out, they do work. They are not tested. They are not officially supported, but they do work. This also applies to the Digi002 family, Mbox2 family, Control24, Command8, Huey, and then the Hyper Control. And I've actually used the 192 on an HD native Thunderbolt and HDX system, so I can tell you that it, it works. The last category, not compatible, will not work. I can tell you I've tried it. The HD Core Process and Excel cards, regardless of their PCI X or PCIe flavor, will not work in Pro Tools 11. The Sync IO, the older blue unit, Sync IO will not work. Sync HD is required for Pro Tools 11. Pro Control will not work. I have one and I use one and I tried it just to be sure and it was a really nasty trick. You go into your peripherals window and you check the the ethernet box and it shows up in the pop-up pro control main, pro control fader. You click OK and it says nope, no, no pro controls here. So pro controls unfortunately will not work in Pro Tools 11. <clears throat> Alright and the next big topic, pricing. So the pricing has been revamped from previous version of Pro Tools. HD 10 to HD 11 is $599. And Pro Tools 10 to Pro Tools 11 is $299. I'll let that one sit there for a minute so you can digest that. I have a feeling that might be a couple of questions answered right there. Any purchases after April 7th get Pro Tools 11 free. So if you've purchased an upgrade recently or you've purchased a new Pro Tools system, after April 7th you will get Pro Tools 11 free. All right, so this is just a quick list of some of the many new features inside Pro Tools 11. And we also have a list of some of the people and projects that are using Pro Tools. We had to slip this one in. This little marketing here. And the new standard for audio production. All right, before we get into the questions, which I have a list here, I wanted to give a plug. I'm in the AVID training department now, so I had to give a plug to AVID training. We have a brand new Pro Tools class available. It's called the Pro Tools ACSR, AVID Certified Support Rep. It's a five-day class. Three of those days are online. Two of the days are in the classroom. You get stuck with me. We build Pro Tools HD rigs. I break them. You fix them. It's a great time. So come on out, sign up for the Pro Tools ACSR. Go to the AVID uh, website for more info on that. And if you can't find that, which would be weird, I can't imagine not finding something on the AVID website, contact Westlake Pro and uh, they'll hook you up with more info on that. And of course, your AVID training partners, there's all kinds of training available wherever you may be locally uh, through our AVID partnerings, uh, our AVID training partners. And of course, there's always Pro Tools workflow training available through Westlake Pro as well. So if you have particular things you want to work on or need training on, contact, contact Westlake and we'll get you. So I know there's some questions. I have a, a sheet of questions here. The first one is for Avi Kipper. I'm going to skip that one because I've known Avi way too long, so I'm going to put him at the bottom of the list. Actually, that's not true. Are there any plans to make the import session data have memory sets or change from a drop-down to a grid selection? Yes, that's really annoying, and I know exactly what you're talking about here. So if I go to the import session data window, I'll show you this very quickly. The answer is there are uh, plans to do that. Um, there is just nothing on the on the docket right now for uh, 
Pro Tools. So if I go to this little pop-up right here, I think that's what you're talking about. You, ch you check one, and then you have to go back and check it again. So memory presets for your import session data. It is definitely on the to-do list for future versions of Pro Tools. I don't know where the priority of that sits, but I will pass this on uh, so that it will be hopefully bumped up. All right. Um, next question. Offline bouncing with UAD plugs. Will it be possible? According to Lev Perry of Universal Audio, once they come out with their AAX 64-bit versions of their plugins, yes, it will be uh, possible to do faster than real-time bounce with UAD plugins, according to Universal Audio. All right, next question. Is Pro Tools 11 uh, compatible with the Tascam DM3200 console so as far as the FireWire connection? So I'm assuming you're talking about a using it as an audio interface. If it is a core audio device, then the answer is yes. I don't know. Does anybody here know if the Tascam operates as a core audio device? No? I, I don't know. So if it's a core audio device, the answer is yes. If you're talking about Huey, I think it does Huey control too. I'm not sure. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it should work fine as a Huey controller for Pro Tools 11 as well. Hopefully, yeah. Yes, if we go back to the, uh, yeah, good, good point. So the question was Huey compatibility. So it still works in 11. Let me bail out of here, go back, and we'll make sure what, that it is on the correct list. There it is. Not officially supported, untested, but it works. Actually, Huey has been in this state, unsupported, untested, but it works for several versions of Pro Tools now. So um, should be fine in Pro Tools 11 according to this. I have not tested Huey, but um, according to this, it looks like it should work. All right, how long will it be until our favorite plugins are made available for Pro Tools 11? Well, of course, all of your favorite plugins are available right now. Revive, Reverb 1, what else do you need? Uh, no, actually, it says, I'm seeing up-and-coming manufacturers working hard on compatible products, but not so much the leaders. Well, um, that's a tough question because the answer varies based on the manufacturer. And again, go to the Avid website. Go to the user conference, the audio forums, and there's a section dedicated to this. But some of the larger plug-in manufacturers, which makes them so cool, is they have so many plugins. The problem with them is they have so many plugins. It takes them a lot longer in some cases to uh, revamp those plugins to the later version. So that may be one reason why you're seeing some delay on the larger plug-in manufacturers. But um, we have many that are already there or partially there or coming very soon. McDSP, for example, has a variety of uh, AAX 64-bit plugins available right now. And of course, um, all the Avid, not all of the Avid, most of the Avid plugins are available as AAX 64. I think Wave's native version is in beta and it's coming soon. Um, Cedar, are they AAX 64? Are available now or coming soon? Available now. All right, I didn't know about that. I'll go back to that other list too, and I'll give you a list of the plugins that are available um, right now as AAX64. Where was that? That was up here, I think. Here's a few. This is the list. So check with your manufacturer, your plugin developers, to see where they are. Here we go. Third-party AAX developers. Air, Arturia, AudioEase. I won't read the whole list here, um, but this is a, a, a good list to start with, and it's growing. The question is the distinction between AAX native and AAX DSP. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good point. I'm glad I, I'm glad I thought of that. Glad you brought that up. All right, so one thing I should point out is the difference between AAX native and AAX DSP. If you recall, older versions of Pro Tools used RTAS and TDM. It's kind of the same thing. 
native refers to uh, host processing, means meaning it gets its power from the computer itself. This is a DSP version. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. This is a the Pro Compressor from Avid. This is the DSP version, which means its horsepower uh, required to do its processing is coming from the HDX card. I can switch it over to native, and it's now an RTAS, or native plugin, getting its horsepower from the CPU. If you have an HD native system, or you have an MBOX system, or Pro Tools standard system, all of your plugins are going to be native. If you have an HDX system, you will have the option to make your plugins land on the computer or our DSP card, and that would be either a native or a DSP version of those plugins. All right, there was a question here, which older interfaces control surfaces will be compatible and which will not? What are the upgrade recommendations? How much is the trade-in value for old interfaces? That's a, that's a lot of questions in one question. So hopefully I answered already the interfaces and control surfaces compatibility. The upgrade recommendations, as always, Avid has a generous upgrade path from older control surfaces into newer ones and older hardware into newer hardware. You really want to make a call to Westlake Pro Audio uh, to help you out based on what gear you have and what gear you want to get into. There was a question? Yeah, we can, we can sort through that. That's yeah. That's a job for Westlake Pro. They can settle all those questions on the upgrade recommendations. And how much is the trade-in value for old interfaces? They can answer that question, too. The Blue Icon series, is it supported in Pro Tools 11? Yes, it is. I have one at home. It's a blue one. It's baby blue. It's very blue. And it works in 11. It does. Yeah. Yes. All right. Another question off the list. This one's from Kirk. First of all, I need to confirm that Pro Tools 11 will not work with... Uh, okay. Pro, will Pro Tools 11... I'm sorry. I misread that. Will Pro Tools 11 work with legacy or non-AAX plugins? The answer to that is no. Pro Tools 11 requires... AAX 64-bit plugins. Old style 192s, yes, we covered that already. They will work. They're not fully supported. They're not tested, but they do work. The Pro Tools HD Excel PCIe core and processor cards will not work in Pro Tools 11. Magma PCIe to PCIe expansion chassis. I don't know. Dave, do you know if that's been supported yet? I don't know that the PCIe to PCIe expansion chassis is supported yet. I do know the Thunderbolt chassis is tested and supported, but I'm not sure about the PCIe to PCIe. We'll look into that. Um, secondly, how will PT11 work with the newly designed, soon to be released cylindrical Mac Pro, the big ashtray air freshener Mac Pro? Um, have no idea. I don't think anybody knows. We will not know until that thing hits the streets on the new Mac Pro. We'll wait for that to come out because that also includes a new operating system as well. So no idea on that one, but you can bet that we'll make it work, whether it, whatever it takes. So it might be right out of the gate that it works. It most likely will be at least a few months, I would say, after that unit is released before we can even uh, offer a uh, an answer on that one. All right, last question on this sheet. Pro Tools 11 cat compatibility with Apogee Symphony I.O. Well, if you're using the Apogee Symphony I.O. as an interface on, a, on an HD native or HDX system, we don't ever test or support those, so it probably will work. have no idea. If you're using it as, those also work as like a USB or FireWire interface as well, a core audio device. So if it's running as a core audio device, you should be fine with Pro Tools 11. Pro Tools 11 compatibility with the Magma Express Box 3T. Any issues? So the Magma Thunderbolt 3 slot chassis is fully tested and supported with HD Native and HDX. I have one of those and I'm using it often. So the Magma 3 slot chassis is working with Pro Tools 11. 
That's all the questions that I have on this sheet. Do we have any? We have another question out here. Yeah, you know, there's, I think, the big issue of uh, waiting for the uh, new Mac Pro to come out in the fall and how soon that might be supported. The Z uh, buying the 12 core now and just being uh, up and running with something that's a lot smaller than March 20th. Especially with Pro Tools 11, 64 bit, more RAM, everything comes around, I can that's true so yeah the 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 topic was the new mac pro versus the currently available mac pro um and how pro tools 11 will significantly increase the performance of any mac and especially the new you know the currently um uh, existing the 12 core Macs. there's um Stability. There's uh, history with these Mac Pros, so we know the systems are up and running. So if you want to get into a system now, by all means, do it. Uh, we have no idea how long the new Mac Pro might take to become compatible, and of course, it will probably be a scream in the machine once it becomes available. But uh, there will be, um, you know, it'll be some time before that comes. But all that said, if you need to get into a system now, don't wait. The, Come on in, the water's fine. The, uh, the Mac Pro towers with Pro Tools 11 are, are screaming machines. Yeah, and that's the other thing, PCIe slots. You know, the Mac Pro, it's this really cleverly designed, nice-looking little cylinder, but you don't picture it with all the crap that's going to be hanging off of it <laughs> as soon as you get it, a chassis and a blah and a this and a that and everything drives and everything else uh, hanging off the side of it so um yeah nothing wrong with the mac pros right now any other questions that we have coming in from offline on on what wow lively bunch out there any other questions here come on barry you got some some good one <laughs> put you on the spot Ten and eleven can coexist. Yeah. So if, if you have a an older TDM system, can you co-install? I know. I blew it. Next question. No. Uh, to be honest with you, the co-install was n not designed for that. But I don't know that it would be a problem. I think it'll work. Yeah, you're gonna know pretty shortly, huh? So um, of course you would have to run Pro Tools 11, um, you know, aggregate like you mentioned, uh, but I don't think it would be a problem, but I've not tried it. You know anybody who's tried it? No. So, um, you might not because it's not even touching the hardware. It's just going straight to native. I don't know, but let me know what you find out and we'll report back. Any other questions? None of the questions over there? All right. I think that's about it. We'll hang out for a minute or two. Yeah, we have another question. Um, understanding the difference between running Pro Tools 11 with Avid hardware versus as a core audio device, is there a performance difference between? He's a plant. But he brings up a very good point, actually. So the question is the difference between running Pro Tools with Avid hardware versus Pro Tools running with third-party or core audio hardware. And the answer is yes, there is a performance difference. The Pro Tools software, and thank you for bringing that up, Pro Tools software and Pro Tools hardware communicate directly to each other. There's no middleman there. Uh, we, we cut right to the chase especially if you have an HD native or HDX system, the, the middleman is totally, totally removed in that respect. We have direct communication between the software, the hardware, and the CPU. When you use a core audio device, Pro Tools is communicating through the OS or on a PC, an ASIO device. So you have the OS and its audio functionality as the middleman before it gets to the hardware. So you will notice a performance decrease by using core audio. How big that will be, I'm not sure. It's less of an issue these days with computers as fast as they are, but there is definitely an advantage to running Pro Tools software uh, and, or Avid software and Avid hardware together. There's no middleman in between. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, 
Wow, haven't heard that one in a long time. So the question was, is Avid ever going to resurrect Turbo Synth? No, uh, it's in line right behind Masterless CD and Sound Designer. So once those two get done, Turbo Synth is right there. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's going to happen, I'm sorry to say. But that's a good question. That was a very popular application, by the way, as you know. Yeah, George. Okay, so okay, so the question is um, regarding Waves plugins, for example, and their their AAX versions. So Waves has made it clear that they are going to uh, come out with AAX 64-bit native only plugins. They are not going to be coming out, from what I've heard, with AAX. 64-bit DSP plugins, so um, you won't be able to run those plugins on your HDX card. You will be able to run them off of the power of your CPU. So it's up to each manufacturer to decide if they want to use uh, or if they want to develop their plugins as native and or DSP. It's completely up to them. One of the bonuses of the AAX plugin format is the plugins for native and DSP are very much the same in terms of coding, which was not the case previously. Our TAS and TDM plugins, for example, were very different. The TDM plugins required a very specific um, developer skill set that not everybody had, which is one of the reasons of several uh, why TDM plugins costed more in the past. The AAX plugin format is, 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 is very much the same in terms of coding and, and developing. Um, the DSP versions are still more difficult and, and a little more uh, um, effort involved because of the DSPs. They have to fit the code onto specific chips, whereas native versions are, are not so particular. So there will be some plugin manufacturers that make native only plugins. Waves is going to be one of them. So to be clear, Pro Tools 11 requires AAX 64-bit uh, plugins. It will not run RTAS. It will not run TDM. It will not run AAX 32-bit plugins. Okay, George, uh, for those of you who uh, may not have heard that, George here at, at uh, Westlake Pro has um, is offered to help you manage your plug-in upgrade uh, minefield. And if you take a snapshot or you can export your list of plugins, and they will uh, help determine which plug 64-bit, which are not, which are DSP, which are native, help you uh, manage your plug-in upgrades. Which brings up another topic. If you already own Avid or DigiDesign plugins, your plugins will be updated for free with your Pro Tools 11 upgrade. So if you already have the iLock license for, for example, Revive, you will get the AAX 64-bit version of that at no additional cost. Some of the other plug-in manufacturers will require a... Um, an upgrade f uh, fee. Uh, some of them don't. McDSP, for example, if you're current version 5 owner of the McDSP plugins, you will get the AAX 64-bit versions of those plugins at no additional cost. So um, that's another topic that West Lake Pro can help you with uh, is determining what plugins you have, what plugins you can get into, what the uh, fees for uh, upgrading, if they exist at all, they can help you out with all that sort of thing. All right, any other questions before we wrap it up? And just want to make it clear, if any questions come up after the fact, please feel free to contact Westlake Pro and we'll we'll tackle them and, and send them out. We can get them up on the uh, the sparse forums, uh, if or however we want to 
get back to you. However you want us to get back to you, we can do that. Answer any questions that we may not have answered tonight. Anything else that we can, uh, yeah. Yeah, so good questions. The question was um, regarding Isotope and um, whether or not their 64-bit version of the AAX plugins are coming soon. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I can say that if they've already gotten an AAX version, the 64-bit version is probably not far behind. That was kind of the whole um, you know, goal line of AAX was to get to 64-bit, and then the AAX 32-bit was an interim move. So I don't have a specific for you on dates, but I would say it's probably coming pretty soon if they already have their AAX version out. What's that? Halfway there. halfway there. They're more than halfway there. I think the hard part's done. Now it's just getting to 64-bit. Um, so clarification on Cedar plugin. Cedar Studio and DNS1 will be RTAS on, PT, on PT10 and AAX native on PT11. Okay, that's good info. So the Cedar plugins will be native AAX64 on PT11. That's according to Troy. I uh, have not verified that myself. Mr. Troy Morris, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Any other questions? Nothing coming in offline? Can they even hear us? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'll be here for a few more minutes. Maybe we can keep it alive a for a few minutes, and if anything comes in, we're, we're happy to jump on and, and answer the questions as they may come up. Otherwise, if that's it, we will uh, we'll wrap it. And, of course, uh, moving forward, Westlake Pro. What's your phone number, George? 323-845-1145. 1145 should be on our splash screen here that we have. We'll post that up in a second. Reach out to Westlake Pro. They can answer a lot of these questions um, that um, you may have about your particular system. It's definitely going to have some variables there, I'm sure. So um, thanks for uh, coming. Thanks for you guys for coming here. And of course, if you want to come up and check out the rig, more than happy to let you see it and all that. And uh, thanks for those who checked in via the internet. And we will catch you soon. Thank you.